Hey, Wyatt, just how tough is that Bears front seven to deal with? <laughs> uh, they're the monsters. I mean, they they have uh, they have everything. They're big. They're strong. They're fast. You know, they're smart guys. They they play well. They play hard. Um, those linebackers are about as good as it gets. You know, uh, you know, once you get to a certain level of uh, <laughs> of success, you know, you're you're a good front. Um, you know, we had our work cut out from us from uh, <laughs> from Monday through uh, through Saturday into Sunday. You know, it was uh, we had to put the work in and. You know, we have a great offensive line, great offensive line coach, great offense. And, you know, luckily we – it was tough to get it started at first and then it started going. And, you know, once we got on a roll, it kept on going. So how good did it feel then to be able to wind up with 215 yards rushing and, you know, build up to that? Yeah, they don't do that often. They don't give up that many yards. So uh, it shows you we stuck to the run. I mean, luckily our defense was playing out of their mind. Um, and, you know – not making excuses, but it would really suck to be your first starting game against those two guys right there with, uh, with uh, the speed that our defense can bring. So you, you, everything's a little quicker when you're going against our defense. So, uh, you know, in practice and everything like that, they get us right. And, you know, another group of monsters is our, is our defensive line. So we have to go against them every day. So, you know, but it's, it's, uh, it's awesome. Thanks. Thank you, Scott. Mary Kay Cabot has our next question. Uh, yeah, I'm sure there's there's one stat that you guys would probably like to have back, though, and that was the uh, uh, you guys usually do such a great job of keeping Baker upright. So five sacks is something that you guys, uh, I'm sure, are are going to put a point of emphasis on this week, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, and that's with everything. I mean, if you know who our offensive line coach is, uh, he doesn't let the the smallest things go. You know, it's it's perfectionist. Um, and we didn't we, we weren't perfect. I mean, like you said. Um, so we need to get back into the lab, right? Make sure that, you know, what the issues were that we were seeing, you know, fix those. And if that's communication, if that's, you know, set in a, a set in a certain way, I mean, again, that was a really good defensive line and, you know, 215 yards of, uh, rushing was, was the plan. I mean, we had to get after them we had to go and then, you know, and pass when we had to get it, those, you know, we had a fourth, a couple, uh, I think two fourth downs that ended in sack and you're like, what the heck, you know, you're blocking the guy and all of a sudden everybody's up here. What, what's going on? What's going on? And uh, Baker's jersey's dirty. Baker's pants are dirty. Dirty. You never want to see that. Thank you. Thanks, Mary Kay. Next is Dan Lobby. Hey, Wyatt. Um, first of all, with Jed Wills, who's playing through that ankle, um, there's been a lot of praise for him kind of trying to fight through that and, and get on the field. So what, what does it say to you guys about him that he's been, you know, trying to give it a go these last couple of weeks? Yeah, I mean, maturity. Right. Like, you know, as when you're young, it's easy to just be like, all right, I have next year, I have next game. I have next week. I have this, I have that, um, you know, with the, the, the injury he had, he had to, you know, it's difficult to push through. I mean, you're, you're playing the entire game, a shoulder and elbow, you can brace that thing up and it's nothing. But when the game is running, and especially with these <laughs> fast defensive uh, fronts that we play in the NFL, it's difficult. It's hard. And he's showing resilience. He's showing toughness um, that a lot of us, you know, it's great to see that out of him. Um, you know, team first guy. I mean, you know, I love Jed. Um, again, you know, we all have stuff to learn. We all have stuff to uh, to toughen out and, uh, you know, get better at. But, you know, he's a he's a great guy and he, uh, you know, he's playing through it. And then I wanted to ask about Kareem, too. Baker said yesterday that he just he plays angry and, <laughs> you know, we all see him run and arms and legs flying everywhere. It, does, does it ever surprise you how many yards he gets? Or, I mean, what do you see in him as a runner? Yeah, I know he's a, he's a great teammate to have, uh, to say the least. Um, but sometimes he'll start talking, talking smack to the D line. You're like, Hey, listen here, buddy, you don't have to block him. I do. So if you could ease up, but no, he's, he's a great teammate. You know, he's always going to bring it. Um, you know, I know he, he had something to prove. He always has a chip on his shoulder. That's how he always runs. That's how he always plays. And, you know, he's a great teammate to have. I mean, if I give him an inch, he'll take a mile. And that's, you know, that's a, it's a good teammate when, when you're blocking for him. Thank you. PJ Ziegler, go ahead. Thanks, Rob. Hey, Wyatt, I want to look at a little bit ahead to Sunday's game. Um, do you get the sense, and I know you guys haven't really started focusing on Minnesota quite yet, but do you get the sense from your head coach that, uh, he's looking forward to going back and, and um, you know, maybe some um, emotions there uh, as, as he returns to a place that he spent a, a long time at. Yeah, I know. We always have the joke, you know, if we play a team that one of our coaches uh, 
played at, we call it the revenge game. It's the, uh, you know, Bill Callahan revenge game. When we played the Redskins, it's the, you know, the Kevin Stefanski revenge game. You know, I, I truly believe that coach Stefanski, the way that he thinks, the way that he's so professional in the way that it's the next one, it's the most important game because it's the next one. And that's the way that he's viewing this game. That's the way he viewed last week. And it's the way he's going to view next week. Um, it's a long season. And if you look ahead, you can get beat. So the best thing to do is focus on, you know, the little things get better, you know, even in a win, if you learn from a win, which was not, um, w- which wasn't the prettiest win. Again, we put two fifteen, but five sacks on the, you know, Baker on the ground five times. You never, you, you know what I mean? There's so much we can improve on um, that before you're thinking about, you know, all this different stuff. You're like, Hey, let's learn from the film. Let's get better. Um, Monday, you know, we're going to get into some film and uh, get right. But you know, the coaches, I think they're probably going to go home at two, 2 AM this morning and, you know, get us right for uh Tuesday and Wednesday and, you know, everything like that. But, you know, that's, that's, what's good about being on this, this, you know, with this staff is, you know, they work extremely hard and they get us all in the right, right places. And, you know, it's our job to take what they're teaching us and get better. Hey, you guys don't play a lot in a dome or you don't play in a dome very often. But going into Minnesota, uh, what challenges does that face? Not only playing on the road, but playing in a in a, an environment like that. Yeah, no, they are uh, they're a crazy fan base. I remember uh, when I was in Buffalo; it was the last time we played the uh, at at Vikings, and you know it, they have crazy fans. Skull, skull, you know it, it, it's awesome. But uh, you know it, it's whenever you're playing in an indoor, um, you don't realize how much to keep those things going, how much air is coming in and how much air is going out. So it can get dry. So, you know, you're thinking, Oh, it's going to be 70 and beautiful. You need to hydrate. <laughs> you need to make sure that you're taking care of your bodies and all the things that, you know, come in August or, you know, September, you got to keep on going. Thank you. Thank you, PJ. Nate Ulrich has our next question. Hey, Wyatt. Um, I just want to ask you, you know, with Wills, like you said, pushing through it and everything, but what has Blake Hans shown you by the way he's been able to stay ready and, and fill in when necessary? I mean, again, another guy who, you know, Northwestern guy, smart guy, right? But, you know, he's a guy who works extremely hard. You know, he's before practice, working on his sets, both sides. You know, he's a guy who, you know, if we have a tackle go down, he goes in. So, you know, he's a, an accountable guy, a resilient guy. You know, he came in last year, Baker didn't even know his name, but he was blocking for him and, uh, you know, protecting him. So, you know, he's a guy that I have a lot of trust in um, and, you know, a guy who can play well, he, you know, he's just got to, you know, trust the technique and fundamentals just like I do. And, you know, success is right there. Um, and I see it when he comes in and he plays extremely hard for, for the group next to him, you know, it, it, it's amazing to have that camaraderie with someone who's coming off the bench. Hey, I, you know, obviously we had uh, written a lot and talked a lot about Odell, you know, for 11 months and, and we finally got to see him. Did anything about his return, uh, you know, leave an impression with you? He's good. He's, uh, <laughs> he's pretty good. Um, there was a couple, uh, couple plays that he was, you know, I saw him toe tap more times than I could, you know, foot fire for. I mean, and he was catching a ball. He's impressive. Um, you know, and that's what makes, you know, those two LSU boys so, so special is that, you know, they feed off of each other. One's that deep speed threat. Good luck covering them. And the next one is, you know, that possession, uh, possession receiver, who's going to catch every ball, you know, and that's, you know, it's tough not having Jarvis and stuff like that, but you know, he's, he's going to be back and he's going to be feeling better than ever. And you see that in O2, you see a guy who, you know, again, the outside world tells you, Oh, he's a, he's an ego. Everybody in the league has an ego. You know what I mean? Like he's, he's a great team player. Um, he cares about his guys. You know, he jokes around with me and you know, who am I, you know what I mean? Like he's, he's a good guy. Um, he's a fun guy. And, you know, I, I really do see, you know, him really bringing it, you know, he, if you throw it his way, he's gonna, he's gonna put a hand on it. And you, as we found out, he only needs, you know, two or three fingers. Um, but no, he's, uh, he's a good teammate and I'm excited to see him back. Hey, I saw Jarvis on the sideline because you, you mentioned him. Um, how much of a leadership role is he still able to bring to this team? You know, it's always harder when, when you're not playing and stuff, because, you know, he, but he's always focused in. That's the best way of putting it. He's a guy who, who truly understands being a leader. Um, and he is a guy who, you know, again, does it his, his way. You know, he high fives, he'll, he'll come up and talk to you. He's, he's, he's awesome. So, you know, another guy who is a great teammate who puts the team first, even though he can't play for us, you know, he's still um, 
still there, still helping the young guys, still being a, you know, you know, a beacon of knowledge for, for everyone around him. So, you know, he's, you know, it sucks not having him. You know, he's a great teammate. And again, you know, one of those guys that, you know, you always, you always respect him and you always uh, listen to him. If he has something to say, you shut your mouth and you listen to him, you know, that's what kind of guy he is. And, you know, he earns it. 